So I have this really cool friend who's incredibly good at Photoshop. And now his name for the record is Jorge. And Jorge went to me and was like, yo, Seso, look at this really cool effect I created. I want you to tutorial on it. And I was like, I think I love you. At least that's what I said in my head. Or maybe out loud, I don't know. Now, anyway, this effect is called Digital Smoke. I named it Digital Smoke. So let's go hop into Photoshop and just like, let's just, let's show you guys how to do the effect. Shout out Jorge. Do not forget about the Everything Pack, the first link in the description, the product where you basically get all of my 32 products for one purchase, and then every other product that I come out with for free via Selfie, you should know about it. So let's go ahead and just check out how to actually do this effect. Now, the first things first, you have to, of course, cut out your specific image or object or building or person or whatever, right click on that cutout layer and make sure you convert it into a smart object. If you do not convert it into a smart object, you will not be able to one, do the effect and two you won't be able to also change any of your filters to actually make the effect and customize it when you're done with it so please make sure you on your cutout layer convert to a smart object and now we are ready to go first things first is we're going to go to filter we're going to go to where it says uh blur gallery and we're going to use a specific blur called path blur the objective that you're going to want to do here is make sure the kind of blur that you're going to be doing goes upward right so it kind of feels like more of like that digital smoke and surrounds the object in a specific way, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click just like so, then I'm gonna drag, click, drag, click, drag, and then click. And then once you don't have to drag anymore, that last point, you're gonna see your cursor changes from being a plus button. If you kind of hover on that last one, to like a, like a pin stop, you press that pin stop, and that is what's gonna set that direction of where you started and where you ended. So right here, you can kind of see that at least immediately what you're getting is a little bit of blur that's happening, that's kind of shooting in this upward direction. For this last pin point that we just had right here, we're gonna select it, and we're gonna change our speed and taper. So our speed, it's gonna be 220, our taper is gonna be 30. Now you can customize this, make, make this whatever you guys want at the end of the effect, but just I would just kind of set it up like this. Also your endpoint speed is the only thing that's actually original to the point that you select. So we're gonna change it to 360. All these other points will have the same 220, 30, and the only thing you have to change is go to the first point that you did, and then change this endpoint to 330. So 30 below 360, right? Just so that there's some kind of momentum that's happening here from your start to your end. Now, once you guys have it all set up with your start and end points, your, your increased speed, you're gonna see a lot more blur happening right at the top. But you know, the blur that's happening here, hopefully it's pointing in this upward direction. See if you do something like this. You're gonna be like, why does my effect not look like Sesos at the end? Because this point, make sure it's pointing up and besides make sure it's pointing it up, make sure the actual blur itself is also going in an upward direction. Uh, you can also turn off censored blur if you guys wish to. You guys get even more of that like dramatic blurring happening. And I might just do it just for this case. You can mess with your tapers, you can mess with your speed uh, anywhere or anytime. So I would just say press okay for now. And if it just looks like, if it just looks bad, we'll go back and fix it. The second thing we're gonna have to do is called a gradient map. Now I'm not talking gradient map down here. This is your free adjustment layers. I want you to make sure you select on your layer, go to where it says image, adjustments and then choose gradient map. Now, the gradient map is also incredibly important. I actually would set it up exactly the way I have it here. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna find yourself again questioning, why does it not look like the Sesso Jorge effect? The far left point, we're gonna make it pure black. Then we're gonna say, not towards the middle, this is the middle. We're gonna move it a little bit toward the left of the middle. And this color is gonna be like a nicer, darker, like like burgundy, burgundy red. So seven and then like five zeros, press okay. And then on the near far right, about 25% of the way before the end, we're gonna have a pure red. And then on the far, far right, your highlight color we're gonna have a red that's ff7 a 7a and that's just basically a nicer red tone now if you don't want to use red as your main color it is okay you can change it with the hue and saturation later just do it and set it up like this okay now the next filter we're going to apply here is going to go to filter and we're going to go to where it says pixelate and then mosaic and this specific effect i'm going to put it at 25 this specific effect is exactly what's going to kind of control a lot of this digital smoke universe so i'm going to press okay so we're going to go back to that Absolutely, but I want to still show you guys what's kind of happening when you put it at 25. At this point as well, if you want to start seeing the actual effect come to life, your overall layers, layer style needs to be linear dodge add, just for the record. But I'm going to turn it off for a second, but just remember that you're going to have to make sure you do that at the end. You'll see me do it again, but the reason why I don't want to do it yet is I want to quickly show you why and what you're putting on. That way you know what you want to change when you want to do the effect at the end, okay? So right after mosaic, we're gonna go to where it says filter, we're gonna go to sharpen and then unsharp mask. Now, of course, right now, without this unsharp mask, I turn it off, the actual mosaic squares themselves don't have much contrast and just will not look good, right? So I'm gonna put my preview back on. We're gonna put our uh, amount at 500, our radius at one and our threshold at zero. And we're gonna press okay. And you can start seeing if I turn it on and off, we get a lot more of that contrast, right? 
perfect. That's what we want. Now to double down on that contrast, we're gonna go to where it says filter again. We're gonna go to where it says, I believe stylize and then trace contour. So trace contour, we're gonna put this uh, levels at 37. We can have our edge on upper or lower. It doesn't really matter too much. I just think upper looks, or excuse me, lower looks better. Press okay. And then you're gonna notice immediately you're gonna have this whole white thing going on and you lost your gradient. What you wanna do is make sure, you see this little options right here. If you didn't know, you can actually change the blend mode of specific filters within a layer, okay? So if you double click on this, it'll open the trace contours filters blurring options or blending options, right? So for this one, we're gonna actually put this mode on divide and we're gonna have even more contrast. You can kind of start seeing the effect come to life. And at this point, if I change this blend mode from normal to linear dodge add, you can start seeing the effects start pulling up now, right? Now this next filter is actually gonna be for a little bit of texture. It's almost like adding noise to a black background texture, right? So we're gonna go to where it says filter. We're gonna go to pixelate and we're gonna do color halftone. For this color halftone, we're gonna have our max radius at four and all of our channels set to 45 and then press okay. And what you're gonna notice is of course, adds in, like I said, kind of like a noisy texture to this effect to make it feel a little more digital and just kind of like, just texture. But we're also changing the blend mode on this color halftone. So if we double click on it, we're gonna change our blend mode from normal to where it says hard mix, just like so. Press okay. And then you have that nice, like sort of dotted line texture, right? It looks really, really nice. And honestly, just without it doesn't look as good. Just, just saying. And now at this point, we are basically almost done. We're gonna add two more same actually filters. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And for this Gaussian blur, the first one, we're actually put out three pixels, press okay. Change our blend mode from normal to I think screen. And then from here, press okay again. And we're gonna do another filter, blur, Gaussian blur. This one though, we're doing at 30 pixels. We're gonna change this blend mode to where it says uh, linear dodge add. And what the gradient maps actually do here is kind of gives your gradient lines themselves a nice little aurora around them, almost like a smoke, like I said before. And just, yeah, this is the effect, ta-da. Now, if you say to yourself, Seth, so this looks nothing like the thumbnail. Sure. Let me show you guys the three things I would change to actually make this yours. Number one actually being the blur gallery, right? We use filter blur, or excuse me, a uh, path blur for this, but you can use all the field blurs or any other blur really. Uh, I would also change mosaic, which mosaic is actually what I'm gonna change right now, just to show you guys. I have it set to 25, but if I put this down to like nine or like in between five and 25, or even if you go higher, if I press nine, we get this really cool smoky like fire texture that I can't hold my happiness and smiles. Look how sick this is. And so yeah, if I put this at five, I'll just really quickly, right? Press five from nine, you can get a little more even, even tighter sort of like smoky-esque-ness going on. And it just looks super, super sick. I honestly wonder what happens if we go super high on the pixelation. Something different, right? So there's so many different effects that you can actually get from doing this and changing around your mosaic. Uh, and the next thing I wanna do really quickly is show you guys the field blur, the blur gallery, right? We're using path blur. If I turn this off though and I use field blur, I can go ahead and just say like, okay, I wanna have no blur up here. Click again, no blur up here. I'll click over here, put a mega amount of blur right here. And then down here, I'll put a nice amount of blur as well, right? Press okay change the blur entirely, and then you get a completely different effect. Now, for the record, if you're like, Sesso, how do I erase? If I use like a layer mask, for the record, use a layer mask whenever you erase, of course, for a smart object, but layer mask is down here. Use a brush, and then basically what happens is black, your color black will erase. If you switch the color to white, it'll fill in, okay? But if I change it to black for a second, if I start erasing it, it doesn't erase it the way I would expect it, right? I would hope that it kind of follows and still adds the effect if I erase. The only thing you have to do is if it's not common knowledge for you is you click on the actual smart filter layer layer mask. There you go. The smart filter layer mask. And if now if you erase it, you're gonna actually maintain a lot of the effect. And hopefully it makes a little more sense for you to actually do it this way. I would just go ahead and do that when you wanna erase things. I would use the actual smart object and erase it rather than using the layer mask. I just feel like it's gonna erase the entire layer. It's gonna look like super blurry. And if I did it over here, at least you kind of keep some of that pixelation that's happening. And now I said, of course, if you did not want red, what I would do is just use the adjustments, uh, hue and saturation. I would just clip mask to it. And now I just kind of change this color around and you guys can have whatever color your heart desires. I think green is kind of fire. I'm also gonna turn back on my, my path blur. And yeah, I mean, undoubtedly one of the coolest effects and honestly, shout out Jorge. Homie is just like a, a Photoshop manual reading individual. Also happens to be someone I work very closely with. So it's just awesome to have someone of this nature who just likes to explore like this on my side. So honestly, shout out Jorge. Don't forget to follow him in the description down below on his Twitter, all that good stuff. He's trying to hit 10K. 
Maybe we can get them there, not us in the specific single video. Maybe we can give them a few hundred. But also, I just hope you guys enjoyed overall and you guys learned something and have a little bit of fun with it. Like I said, the specific effect, if you followed it to the T, even to my mosaic layers, I would go back into every single filter and play with them. And you might find something really, really cool and make the effect even further on your own uh, or just make it more yours, basically, and just kind of have a really cool direction with it. So with that being said, that is Sesso HQ out. You're going to get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking Product guys later much love peace and enjoy your day and uh sorry for not posting for like a couple weeks i'm a busy boy was this cool was this worth the wait if not don't say it if it was w later